Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about a series that is very near and dear to my heart and that is the James Bond novels by Ian Fleming. Uh, this is a series that I just finished up this year. I started reading it last year uh, as a nice palate cleanser and uh, I really enjoyed my time with the series. Uh, but it's an interesting series because it is definitely not one for everybody and the quality in the 14th and the 14 books uh, varies greatly between uh, between books and depending on when they were uh, published. So my goal here today is to tell you, you know, what books are worth it, what ones maybe are worth it, and then ones that you can probably skip over unless you're like me and wanted to be a completionist. Now, most people know James Bond from the action movies. You know, you have the likes of Daniel Craig, Roger Moore, Pierce Brodnan, Sean Connery, and these big action spy adventure movies. And I will say that the books are very different than in the movies. I would, I've said it multiple times, but there is definitely a book James Bond and a novel James Bond, or and a movie James Bond. And that line definitely does get blurred uh, as the series goes on a little bit. They, they start to be more and more similar, but there is definitely a distinction, especially early on in the Bond book. Now, before we get any further into this, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this uh, content warning out for the series as a whole. This is a series written by a British man who was born in 1908. I'm sure you can imagine some of the thoughts and ideologies that Ian Fleming had and that are displayed in this in this series. Uh, you know, there's <laughs> so much uh, derogatory talk towards women. There is obvious and blatant racism, stereotypes. I mean, everything you can think of when you think back on uh, history in one way or another kind of finds its way into these books. And so if you're the kind of person who uh, can't look uh, past those things or you know doesn't want to read anything with those uh, <laughs> those elements in them, you know this definitely isn't going to be a series for you. Um, I know some people can and can't, you know, that's all up to you. No judgment here. I will say that I believe there is going to be a new printing of James Bond coming out soon that I have mixed feelings about, but they are going to try to update it for a more modern uh, society, you know, with different standards uh, for what is and isn't okay to say. And, um, you know, that's a whole different conversation about changing works by an author and what that means and everything. And that's not the point of this video, but you know, maybe that's something you will be more interested in. But with that last little warning out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into uh, whether I think these are worth it. And I broke this into three categories. I have the, it's definitely worth it if you can get over that content warning. Ones that may or may not be worth it or that are worth it if you like the series. And then I have a couple that uh, I think you can just skip. And um, this actually follows my ranking from first to uh, the 14th ranked book, except for my number one pick. My number one pick actually has a little asterisk next to it. So let's go ahead and get into it. So let's go ahead and start with the books that I think are definitely worth it to read. Um, this is a mixture of good stories, good uh, plot pacing, good character work, you know, those kind of things, those general things that make, um, you know, books good. And uh, these all have, and I've referred to this many times when talking about James Bond, is charm. There's just this kind of charm, spy, thriller, I don't know, it, maybe it's a nostalgia kind of feeling for me, uh, but, you know, all of these books that I'm going to mention here definitely have that charm. And we're going to go ahead and start with Moonraker. I think this is pretty uh, commonly referred to as the best James Bond novel. It is technically my second favorite. Like I said, I will mention when we get to my number one personally. But, you know, I in most lists I see, this is up near the top, at worst, third place for most people. But yeah, in general, this is a great book. Uh, it's fantastic. The character work is great. The plot is great. Just everything about it is a great book, and I highly recommend this one. Next up will be Goldfinger, and there are definitely some very iconic uh, scenes from, from this book. Uh, obviously, you, we're, we're going up against somebody who is obsessed with gold. And uh, there are just some really creative things that you have definitely seen in pop culture. I think this is definitely one of the books that has a lot of pop, pop culture, you know, references back to it. Um, you know what I'm talking about, you know, a lady painted gold, somebody painted gold, definitely comes from this book and it is definitely worth the read. After that, I will mention Casino Royale, which is the first James Bond novel. And you know, this series starts out really strong. This is a really fantastic book. Um, it has the little things that I really enjoyed about James Bond, whether it be just the card games that are in it, just the, the suaveness of Bond, just everything that happens, there are consequences. He's not so overpowered that nothing bad happens to him. And uh, this series starts off on a really strong foot and I highly recommend Casino Royale as well. And the last of 
the books that I think are definitely worth a read is Dr. No. And this one is probably second place when it comes to uh, things that influence spy culture and just popular cultural references. Um, James Bond is going up against Dr. No, who is kind of a mad scientist and some of the things that get explored there and kind of the trials and tribulations that James ends up going through are really well done, really well written, uh, really suspenseful. And you're kind of wondering how is he going to end up dealing with everything, getting through it. And uh, yeah, it definitely is worth a read. My next category is the Maybe if you liked the list above, you might like these as well. Uh, and this is actually where my number one book comes in. And that is the book right here behind me. I have the super nice Folio uh, Society edition of it. And that is Diamonds Are Forever. And in this, it is a diamond smuggling operation that James gets wrapped up into. And I think this is maybe an unpopular opinion when it comes to James Bonds. Most of the other lists I've seen have this much, much further down in their rankings. But for whatever reason, this book just worked for me super well. I really enjoyed it. Just some of the creativeness of the diamond smuggling that happens and just everything about it. Uh, you know, it's my favorite one. And uh, yeah, I wanted to put this in the it's worth it category, but I wanted to remove some of my bias from it. And uh, when I saw it down on other people's lists and just wasn't talked about as highly as some of the other novels, uh, you know, it made me move it into this with some asterisks. So this is my number one book but I think I'm definitely in the minority there. Next up, and this is almost another worth it book, and that is On Her Majesty's Secret Service. And the reason this doesn't get that status of worth it is because it is technically part of the Blofeld trilogy. And I have some thoughts on the later book, actually the first and third book. This is technically the middle one, which also makes it a little confusing, even though you can read most of these in whatever order you want to. Uh, yeah, this, this one is good, but you know, this is starting to get into the territory of it was only good after I had pushed through some stuff that wasn't good. And because it's in the middle of a, a trilogy, it's not really a trilogy, but because it's kind of in the middle of an arc, it's really hard for me to say it's worth reading when you have to read another book that's not really worth reading. So that's kind of why it ended up here in this category. But there is some cool action scenes in this around skiing. So if you're into that, that's cool. Uh, and it definitely kind of goes back to its spy roots. There's a lot of this book where James is learning a completely new skill about people's heritage. Apparently in the UK or in England, um, it was really popular for people to try to trace their ancestry back to like lords and dukes and all of that stuff. And, and Bond spends so much time invested in that to get to where he needs to be. And just, it really went back to those early spy, you know, actually having to put in work and it's not just so actiony uh, that by this point in James Bond, it was kind of lacking. After that, I have Live and Let Die. This follows a pretty notorious Bond villain, uh, Mr. Big, and uh, they are <laughs> smuggling gold coins to help the Soviets. And that's really all I'm gonna say about that one. I'm not gonna, there's not much more to say on some of these. If that sounds interesting to you, go for it. After that, we have From Russia With Love. And this is a book where the Soviets are really after James Bond. Uh, after he had done some things in earlier books that take out some of their top operatives, they are really gung-ho at getting rid of James Bond. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. The ending of it is kind of anticlimactic, but also climactic at the same time. And you really have to read the next book to, to understand why I'm saying that. But uh, yeah, that is where it falls on the list. And the last book in the maybe you would like it if you like some of the other books category is The Spy Who Loved Me. And this is the most unique James Bond novel, simply for the fact that James Bond is actually barely in it and he is not the main character. We actually follow a, uh, a female lead in this one on her Vespa scooter traveling down uh, this, uh, down the country and just how, uh, you know, it's really her life. There's barely any action for most of this book, but it is really interesting seeing the perspective of James Bond from, from a different point of view and you know how he interacts, how he's able to quickly diagnose situations and everything like that. Uh, it's just kind of an interesting peek into a, a different viewpoint in the world. And now we are into the books that, while I still did personally like them, I think they are pretty skippable. And we'll go ahead and start with Thunderball. This is also part of that Blofeld trilogy. It is the first one and not a whole lot happens in this book. It is, um, you know, a nuclear threat kind of book. And yeah, I, it doesn't really work. It's pretty boring. Uh, the ending is pretty good. It does kind of carry this book. Uh, it, it has a pretty cool underwater scene that happens, but in general, it's 
you know, you have to really be uh, invested in James Bond to want to read it. Next up is The Man with the Golden Gun, and this is the quintessential It's Missing the Charm. This is the kind of novel where I think if Fleming had written it earlier on in his career, he maybe would have fleshed some things out, it would have been better. Because the general plot of it is very similar to some of the earlier books, and unfortunately it just, there's just clearly something missing, and I wish I could really put it, put my finger on what it is without just going back to the charm that some of those earlier books had. And, you know, it's an interesting premise, but once again, it just kind of falls flat. And maybe I was frustrated with the series at this point because, you know, it wasn't, it, it was missing that charm. And so maybe I'm slightly biased towards it, but this is another one you can go ahead and skip. Next up, we have the two short story collections, which is The Living Daylight, Octopussy, or it's Octopussy and The Living Deadlight, and then for your eyes and your eyes only and other short stories. And James Bond books are already pretty short. They are not long, they are not a big commitment. That's why I do feel good about recommending some of those ones earlier on. And uh, having short stories in here, it just isn't really enough to get what I want out of a James Bond story. They're very, very fast paced. And some of them are just boring, honestly. Uh, you know, I'm sure there are some people who really like the, the just the really quick, spy stories that happen in these two short story collections, but for me, they didn't work. And finally, the only James Bond book I did not like. Everything else was at least a three star, uh, but then we get to the conclusion of the Blofeld trilogy that I have mentioned a few times, and that is You Only Live Twice, and I really did not like that book. It is such just bad. It, nothing about it makes sense. Um, it, we. There's so much idolization about um, Japanese culture and specifically about how honorable it is for them to, you know, commit, I, I'm, I can't say it, but uh, everyone knows what I'm talking about and how honorable they are. And I don't know, it was some very strange things going on in that book. And then the final climax is just done so poorly. You know, this is supposed to be the showdown between Bond and somebody who did some horrible things to him and it just isn't. It's dumb. You literally have the main character, the, the villain, Blofeld, walking around a poisonous garden in a full-on samurai suit. It's just not good. And uh, I was very, very disappointed with this book, uh, especially because the book before it, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, was pretty good. And it had given me hope for this book, and it let me down, let me down big time. So... That is definitely the worst James Bond book in my opinion. So overall, I have about four of the 14 books being really worth reading. And then you kind of go from there, uh, whether or not you liked those books or not. So, you know, let me know if you have any plans on reading any of these. I definitely think if you're going to try to pick one, go with Moonraker. You, I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's a pretty good time and you know, just a lot of history with this series. I know it's definitely turned into more of a movie series uh, at this point, but I think the novels still have their place. Uh, and, you know, they serve a spot on your shelf, on your TBR, at least a couple of them. But that's all for me, and I hope you have a good one.